If you want to see some of the craziest and most professional PC mods on YouTube right now, go check out BitTech's channel linked in the description. The effort that goes into every single one of those videos is insane, and his channel isn't going to stay small for very long, so go be one of the first to subscribe. Hey, I'm Ditek, and I like to build stuff and modify computers, and this video is about building an acrylic bender, which is a useful tool if you're trying to bend acrylic. Yes. It's basically just a hot wire with a frame around it, and it's pretty easy to build, and this is how you build it. You don't need a whole ton of stuff to make an acrylic bender. The power supply is the most expensive part, and then all the other things you can basically just get from Amazon or a local hardware store. And everything I use in this video will be listed in the description, by the way, so if you see me using a certain tool or a piece of material or whatever and you don't know what it is, check the description and you'll be able to find it. I'm starting with two pieces of MDF, and they're basically just two feet by two feet, but this isn't an exact science. You can get bigger or smaller pieces of wood or MDF or whatever you want to use, but I feel like two feet by two feet is a pretty good size, and I'm happy with it, so if you use that size as well, I don't think you'll be upset. I just marked out some lines on my first piece of MDF. The three lines in the middle will be for cutting out the slot that the aluminum U-channel is going to live in, and then the two lines on each side are going to be to make the actual bendy part a little bit smaller so we have some room to work with the screws that the nichrome wire is going to be attached to. For this bender I'm making, I was just experimenting with the measurements, just kind of winging it, but for the sake of perfection, instead of using five and a quarter inches on the larger side like I did, I would suggest using four inches. And then one inch for the smaller side is perfectly fine and then I have a half inch u-channel so that's the size that I cut out for the slot. Once all your MDF is cut down to the size that you want it to be it's time to cut the aluminum u-channel to be the same size as the slot that you just cut in the MDF. And now that that's finished you can kind of see where this is going. I ended up buying door hinges for this project because that's kind of all I could find at the hardware store I was looking around in, but they ended up being kind of bulky and large so I looked around my workshop and found a couple of smaller hinges. You really don't need super crazy hinges for this, like door hinges, they're not going to be supporting that much weight, so just get small ones. The smaller your hinges, the more space you're going to have in your actual work area. At this point it's time to attach one side of the cut piece of your MDF to the baseboard. I just drilled a bunch of holes and slotted in a bunch of wood screws. Again, this is not an exact science, it just needs to be held down. And it's definitely kind of mandatory actually to, if you're using screws, use a screw with a flat top to it and make sure that they're kind of recessed down into the MDF. You don't want them poking up above the board because you need it to be flat so that your acrylic can lay flat on top of it. I did this just by widening up the top of the hole so that the heads of the screws could sit flush with the top of the MDF. Alternatively, I'm sure you could just use double-sided tape or glue or something to get this thing to stick down and I'm sure that would be fine. We also have to get the U-channel screwed down to the board, so I just used three screws and drilled three holes and it was fine. Again, make sure your screws don't stick too far up into the middle of the U-channel because they can't touch the nichrome wire or it will short out and that would be bad. Just make sure whatever screws you use have flat heads to them and you'll be fine. I say something, it's out of line. I say it again, another time. I spoke freely when I was 17 I said the kind of things that no one was letting me I pick you up, I pick you out of a crowd How does it sound? Am I as loud as you want? Next it's time to attach the hinges, and on the side where the board is totally screwed down, it's okay if your screws are a little bit long and they go into the other board because that board is going to stay there anyway. But if your screws are too long on the side that is supposed to swing up, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get everything the way it's supposed to be, but it's not really that big a deal. If your screws are too long for that side, you're just going to have to go through this little dance that I did in the video. This kind of does emphasize my point that none of this at all is really an exact science. Even if you have two long screws for every single one of your screws, you can still just cut off the backs. I would say like half of the screws I used were too long for what they were supposed to be, and I just used my Dremel to make them shorter, and it worked perfectly.
Now that the actual bender frame thing is made, it's time to add in the actual heating element, which is this nichrome wire. The gist of it is, you just stretch it from one side of the aluminum U-channel to the other without letting it actually touch anything, which is actually easier than it sounds. You just have to use a couple of screws and a spring to hold it in place. On the shorter side of the bender, you just have a screw that's meant to hold the end of the nichrome wire in place, and on the longer side of the bender, on the other side of the U-channel, you just have to put a flathead screwdriver screw right near the end of the U-channel, and that kind of just holds the thing in place where it's supposed to be, suspended in the area, kind of in the middle of the U-channel where it's supposed to be. And then another screw a little bit farther away that's just meant to hold the spring that attaches to the nichrome wire, and that spring is actually there because when the nichrome wire heats up, it expands, and when it cools down, it retracts, and that spring is just to kind of keep the tension correct. If it heated up and expanded to the point where it was drooping and touching the U-channel, it would short out and that would be bad. And this spring kind of just makes sure that doesn't happen. You saw me cut into the top of the flathead screw that I'm using to keep the wire in place that's right at the edge of the U-channel, and that's just to make the divot a little bit deeper so that it holds onto the wire a little bit better. You don't have to do that, I just did it because I feel like it's better, and if you didn't have a flathead screw, then you would have to do that to a regular screw just to make a divot in it anyway. And finally what you're seeing here is me adding this little brace to the side underneath the hinge and that's just there to more easily let me line up my acrylic so that it's completely 90 degrees from the U-channel. I just used my L-square to make sure this thing was lined up correctly. You don't have to use it, you don't have to add this to your own bender, it's just kind of a little more convenient. But yeah, that's it for the DIY part of making this bender. Now it's just uh, attach the power supply. Just plug the little alligator clamp cables into the power supply and then plug the power supply into your wall outlet. And then clamp one of the alligator cables onto each side of the nichrome wire. I just used the voltage and amperage of what the power supply was set to by default and that seemed to work perfectly. So I would say probably 10 volts, 10 amps is exactly what you need. And you can see once you hit the power button with the clamps on the nichrome wire, then eventually, it takes like a minute, but it starts to heat up red hot. And here's an example of why we have a spring attached to the end of this wire, because when it heats up and cools down, it expands and contracts, and the spring kind of just keeps the tension. Once your nichrome wire is red hot, it only takes a minute or so to get to that point, then place your piece of acrylic over the top of it, wait until it's relatively pliable. You can kind of test this by poking at it a little bit and seeing if it will bend yet. And then once it is bendable, just bend it. And then turn off the power supply and let it cool down. And when it cools down, it'll stay in shape. So I hope you got some value out of that tutorial. You can see that it's not that hard to do and the most expensive part about it is the power supply which is useful for other things as well like if you're trying to nickel plate some kind of metal then you need electricity so this power supply could be used for that. The point is it's useful for other things as well. If you want to see more videos like this one, subscribe to this channel, hit the join button on my channel to become a channel member, and that gives you some pretty cool perks. And again, check the description for a list of all of the tools and materials that I used in this video, along with all of my social media accounts like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Discord, all that kind of stuff, and I will see you in the next video.